Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a trigonometric equation. We haven't done trigonometric equations for a while, I just noticed, and I thought this might be a good idea. But this equation is not very standard because we've done the sum of the, I think, the sum of the cubes. We've probably done some of the fourth powers. I can't remember the sixth powers, but we've done the eighth powers, we've done tenth powers, we've done fifth powers. So we've done a lot of um, problems with powers of uh, sine and cosine, but they were always the same powers. So this time I thought maybe make it a little bit, uh, you know, more interesting, I think, in my opinion. And I wanted to put the cube and uh, third power together. Anyways, so how do you solve these kinds of equations? It's not, so they're not, they don't have the same power. So you can't really use those formulas that you use with sum of cubes, sum of fifth power, so on and so forth. I have to use a different approach, but guess what? we have a very important identity. And what is that identity? It is sine squared x plus cosine squared x equals one. Isn't that beautiful? This is the most important identity in trigonometry in my opinion. And this allows you to replace sine squared x with something. Let's go ahead and do it. Sine squared x can be replaced with one minus cosine squared x. And that gives us a nicer equation. Well, not that nice, but it's okay. It's doable. So let's go ahead and replace sine squared x with 1 minus cosine squared x and let's see what happens. Oops, I wrote x squared but that should be a cube. Now obviously what does this look like to you? To me this looks like a cubic equation. So we're gonna deal with a cubic and we've just done a cubic equation you know but cubics are fun to solve. Especially this one is a good one. So Anyways, how do I solve it? Well, uh, I want to multiply both sides by eight. I don't like fractions. I don't know about you. You probably don't like them either. Nobody likes fractions, poor fractions. And then when you do, you're gonna get a seven. Uh, put, put it over to the left-hand side. Just bring it over here. You're gonna get plus one equals zero. Awesome. Now, this is a cubic equation in cosine x. So let's go ahead and use substitution. Always, you know, that's that's the go-to method. So let's uh, replace cosine x with c. Wow, that was a huge improvement, right? So now I'm going to write my equation as 8c cubed minus 8c squared plus 1 is equal to 0. Yay, that's a cubic. But notice that we don't have a c term. Well, if we didn't have a c squared, that would be nice because that would be a reduced cubic. Uh, but that's okay, we can deal with this. Now, one thing I want you to notice is we can use the rational root theorem. But this is not monic meaning that the coefficient of c cubed is not one. In that case, you're basically looking at a fraction because you're kind of uh, dividing divisors of one by divisors of eight. I mean, you could get an integer, obviously, you could turn out, like it could turn out to be like one, but obviously one doesn't work, you know that. But we're basically gonna be looking at something like, you know, plus minus one divided by plus minus one, plus minus two, plus minus four, plus minus that, so on and so forth. But these are hard to check. So why don't we try to make this monic and you can make it monic. So again, monic polynomial means that the leading coefficient, the coefficient of the term with the highest degree, with the highest power, is one. So monic polynomials are important because they are easier to solve. And rational root theorem also nicely applies. And this can be turned into a monic polynomial by using, guess what's my favorite method? Substitution, yeah. Okay, first of all, let's go ahead and write this as 2c quantity cubed, and I'm going to have to joke here, sorry about that, but let me do the uh, substitution first and then I'll talk about it. Now 8c squared, can I use 2c? And I'm going to say 2c or not 2c, right? Okay, I can do 2c quantity squared, but that's going to give me 4c squared, so I do need to multiply by 2, but that's okay. Now I'm going to call 2c u. Do you see what I see? Hopefully. Now it's going to turn into u cubed minus 2u squared 2u, okay. u cubed minus 2u squared plus 1 equals 0. Now what is so special about this? Like I know some people are asking, oh, I already got the answer. I know the answer. I can guess it. Yes, you can. But not everyone can and I would like to present it. One of the things that I keep saying all the time, what is the first thing you check? Some of the coefficients. Look at that. 1 minus 2 plus 1 is equal to 0. 
Yay. Sorry, that looked like an H and that really bothers me. Sorry about that. Okay. 1 minus 2 plus 1 equals 0. Yay. That means u equals 1 is a solution. Awesome. That, that's something you should always check. Now let's go ahead and arrange this polynomial and, you know, we can just factor it. u cubed minus u squared minus u squared plus 1. That wasn't too hard, right? Now we can factor by grouping. We can take out u squared times u minus 1 minus u squared minus 1 can be written as u plus 1 times u minus 1. I hope you don't mind skipping a step. Now u minus 1 is a common factor. We can kind of take it out and we get u minus 1 multiplied by u squared minus the subtracting the quantity u plus 1 is going to result in u squared minus u minus 1 and the whole thing is equal to 0. The second factor should be somewhat familiar to you and this is going to give us actually interesting results and I'm also going to show you uh, a graph of this which is kind of interesting. It's an interesting graph. Uh, we'll take a look at that too but anyways let's solve this first. From here u equals 1 but remember u is 2c. 2c or not 2c. Okay. So set it equal to 2c. From here it gets equals 1 half. Beautiful. What about the other solutions? Well the quadratic gives me 1 plus minus the square root of 5 over 2. Hopefully this number is familiar to you. And divide by 2. You get 1 plus minus square root of 5 divided by 4. Now, now the, these values should be familiar to you. Both of these numbers. But the, the div division by 4 actually gives you something nicer trigonometrically. But anyways. This one basically implies that, well, we do know cosine pi over 3 is equal to 1 half, so we're going to use that information to solve the problem. And these ones give us two different values, and those are very special values. If you think about the regular pentagon, you're going to know what I'm talking about, cosine pi over 5, which is, by the way, 36 degrees. Cosine pi over 5 is equal to 1 plus root 5 over 4, and cosine 3 pi over 5, which happens to be the 108 degrees, is 1 minus root 5 over 4. So those are going to be the values that we're going to use to solve our equation in the general sense. Of course, this just means that cosine x is equal to 1 half, or cosine x is equal to cosine pi over 3. And as you know, this equation can be solved in the general sense by writing pi over 3 plus 2 and pi multiples of 2 pi are added, or you can write the x as just subtract from 2 pi, you're going to get 5 pi over 3, plus 2 n pi in the general sense. If you replace n with 0, then you're going to get the single solution between 0 and 2 pi. And the other equations are going to give us the following, so we can safely say that if cosine x is equal to cosine pi over 5, then we pretty much get the same idea, pi over 5 plus n 2 pi, or 2 n pi, and the other solution is just going to be uh, you know, we have to subtract it from 2 pi, that's going to be 9 pi over 5 plus 2 n pi. And the other equation, cosine x equals cosine, what was it, 3 pi over 5, is get, going to give us two solutions in the general sense, 3 pi over 5 plus 2 n pi, and the other solution, uh, you can find it by subtracting this from uh, 2 pi, which gives us 7 pi over 5 plus 2 n pi. Obviously, if you're looking for solutions between 0 and 2 pi, then you're looking at these values only. And let's go ahead and take a look at the graph, and we're going to finalize with that. Uh, for this problem, I graphed y equals sine squared x plus cosine cubed x minus 7 eighths because I wanted to look at the x-intercepts. If you set this equal to 0, basically, you find the solutions to our original problem. And those roots are basically right there, placed on the graph nicely. And this is an interesting graph because it kind of behaves differently on different intervals. And I'm just showing you from 0 to 2 pi. And this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.